from the white man with the black heart, and I reckon I'll preach like an African. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so brothers and sisters up the back there, how are you guys? <laughs> Turning the heart. Mm -hmm. There are hearts that are turning away. Yes. And the Lord was speaking to my wife, Pastor Dan, and, and I, she's actually very prophetic, my wife, myself. The Lord said the same thing with no other people God had spoken to about four or five years ago. Might be a little bit longer than five years, actually. The Lord started saying to us, I'm about to sift mm -hmm. and separate. Mm -hmm. Sift and separate. Sift. And separate. But you see, it all comes back to the heart mm. as to where we stand. Hallelujah. I bet you didn't think you were going to hear this spoken today, did you? Amen. Hallelujah. See, people in this place today, God just wants to breathe on you. Just wants to yeah. breathe on you. He wants to breathe on us. Yeah. What's the grief on our hearts? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is the day, this is the time, this is the hour for the sons and daughters of God to rise mm -hmm. and walk in divine health, divine strength. Once again, it doesn't matter what your age is, whether you've got hair on your head or not, or your grey hair or not, young or old, to walk in divine health, divine strength. Mm -hmm. And to engage with the Lord's purpose and plan in this hour and be part of Hallelujah. what yes. he's doing. Yes. Because there is a restoration happening yeah. in the earth yeah. alongside everything that the devil has tried to do by way of killing, stealing and destroying. Yes. And with that restoration, the Lord himself is being held back. Mm-hmm. Repentance, conversion, transformation, times of refreshing coming from the Lord. This revival, brothers and sisters, in the wind. It's the mm -hmm. other thing the Lord said to me today for the church here. Some of you are going to experience the gentle breeze of His Spirit just blowing on you. Mm -hmm. At different times and places and ways when you kind of start to feel a little bit heavy of heart, the Lord just breathes on you. It just reminds you that you're His. <laughs> you're His son. You're His daughter. You're his child. You're his vessel. Mm -hmm. You're his man or woman that he went after and went looking for to be one that walks with him. With a heart that's turned towards him, not away from him. Not a Solomon who was wealthy, rich, powerful. You know, Solomon's name made Israel more famous and Solomon became famous for the name and for the wisdom. Mm -hmm. People came. Sheba came. Others came. Tested his wisdom, but in the end, his heart was turned by the very thing that was his treasure. What his treasure became was the 700 wives and the 300 concubines. That was his treasure, and so that's where his heart was, because every one of them worshipped a different god, little G. His heart drifted. His heart drifted. Hot, cold, or lukewarm, what are we? Hot! Hot! Yes. It's hot, man! Hot! Hot, hot! What, my coffee hot? My tea hot? My food hot? Better to be hot or cold than lukewarm. I don't want to be spewed out of his mouth. I really don't want to be spewed out of his mouth. And a faithful, loyal church, a faithful, loyal people to the Lord will always respond in kind to the Lord. Yes. Always. Honestly, from the heart. Because God's always looking for people that respond honestly from the heart. Mm. Hallelujah. See, David and David shepherded, the scripture says in, I think it's Psalm 78, I get the verse in the chapter around the wrong way sometimes. Psalm 78, verse 72, or Psalm 72, verse 78, says that David himself shepherded the people of God according to the integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands. And of course, the third and most important ingredient he had was the anointing of God's spirit. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because if you haven't got his spirit, you're just a dead man walking. 
And that's why the church is dead in so many places, because the Holy Ghost is outside knocking on the door. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Let me in. And Jesus is sitting there like that, and tapping his foot, saying, How long are you going to be poor before you let me in? <laughs> so many churches don't exist anymore, brothers and sisters. There's so many that have gone since this past few years. I've lost count. <laughs> You see yourself blessed, Pastor, if you're still serving in the ministry and the church is still going. This is we've seen a lot of pastors pull out of the ministry too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody said to me, the Ten Commandments don't count anymore. They don't matter. Well, let's have a look at this. Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 5 says this. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven, above all that is in the earth beneath, all that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Exodus 20, verses 4 to 5. A jealous God, then he goes on to say, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. And of course, to those that love me, it goes on to say the very opposite. What about this one? 1 John. 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 21. Okay, I'm reading the New King James Version. Somebody said I need to be delivered from the New King James. <laughs> Other people like the King James Version, but these are thousands. We've, we've of our uh, ghost. I'll follow us. Anybody like King James? <laughs> Shakespeare in English? <laughs> it's not copyrighted. That's a good thing about it. They want to copyright everything now. Yeah? 1 John 5 21 says, Little children, Apostle John says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Now, why would he have said that to a New Testament church, body of believers? Why would he have said that if it wasn't an issue? Mm-hmm. Why would he have said that? Why would, have that? why would that have been his closing words in 1 John? Because he knew it was still an issue. Yes. Uh-huh. The man has this issue of the heart. You know, when your heart goes south, usually relationships go bad, don't they? When your heart goes south, your relationship with God goes bad. Mm -hmm. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. In other words, keep yourself from things that would take God's place in your life. Yeah? Let me put it to you like that. Things that would occupy and take that space that belongs only, it's only God's place God's space in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter what trials, no matter what tests, no matter what difficulties, no matter what challenges you're passing through, no matter what difficulties you might be having in your marriage, no matter what challenges you might be having with your family, your children, your grandchildren, whatever, hold fast in your heart. Stay loyal in your heart. Stay hot in your heart with the Lord. Hallelujah. I can't Amen. say it enough. Amen. I cannot say that enough. Amen. Amen. In the times that we are in now. I mean, it's always been a good time to sit and have a little talk with Jesus. It's always been a good time, no matter what season, no matter what time or place, no matter what country, no matter what part of the world. But like never before now, it's always a good time. Mm-hmm. To sit down in that place with the Lord and have a talk to him. Let your heart be what he wants it to be. Mm-hmm. The turning of the heart towards him continually, no matter what comes along, no matter what comes your way, mm-hmm. no matter what difficulties you might be passing through. Because I'll tell you one thing, the devil wants to defile, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, temple of the Holy Spirit. The devil wants to defile, a lot of defilement happening. That's what comes with idolatry, idolatrous hearts. A lot of defilement comes. The devil loves to defile the temple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. The devil comes to defile the temple. He that endureth to the end shall be saved. Amen. He that endureth. Sorry, I'm not quite all the scriptures with him, but that's okay. Some of you think you know your Bible well. He that endureth. He that endureth. 
My grandmother used to say that to me when I was a kid. He that endureth it in. I used to look and I saw a grey animal. You know what you're talking about, man. He that endureth to the end. Should we say? Oh, but there's work to do. I said there's work to do. The Spirit of God said there's work to do. But which direction is our heart turning in right now? Which direction is it turning in? Let's not be like Solomon. 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a man that needs prayer. Yeah. <laughs> and and I was, that was the next thing I was going to say, Pastor. Deliverance. That's a man that needs deliverance. Amen. But I think it proves the point. Idolatry and sexual immorality, don't you? Mm -hmm. Let's stand on our feet, shall we? Hallelujah. I'm not 